Okay, so we are going to do unit three, lesson one. It's a very quick overview of polynomials. So if you go right to your front calendars, I'm just gonna have you write down just today's date on this first one. So polynomial functions are very easy concepts. We're gonna do some classification, what we call end behavior today. So today is October 1st. So September is officially done. Okay, so here are the different parts of a polynomial. So this is your general form of a polynomial. Let me translate that underneath and just make this an example so that you can pull off all the vocabulary terms. So let's say we have a polynomial p of x equals, I'm going to just make up some numbers here. So let's make this a cubic function and let's say we have 6x cubed plus 10x squared plus 12x plus, I don't know, 100. So this is an example of a polynomial, and this is written in standard form, just like you did your last unit. So this is standard form. That's imperative. And here's some terminology that pertains to different parts of your polynomial. So this n right here corresponds to the exponent of your leading term. And in our case, the n is just two. And that is the degree of your polynomial. And we talked about that already this year. Your quadratics that you did yesterday that were degree two, that meant it had two solutions. Degree three would have three solutions. Your next part, the a sub n, that corresponds with this right here. So that's the six in my example, and that stands for a leading coefficient. So a sub n algebraically represents your leading coefficient. Next, the entire expression, a to the n, x to the n, is this whole term right here. And what do we call it? We call it the leading term. So this is your leading term. It's when your polynomial has been arranged in standard form. And then my last part, a to zero, would be the 100 in my case. So that's just a constant. That's just a constant right at the back. Okay, so examples of different polynomial functions, most, most of which you've already heard before in the past. So the first type of polynomial function is just a constant function. So this is just a straight line, no slope. So I'm gonna say P of X equals, I don't know, how about 10? So just nice basic, p of x equal to 10. So your leading coefficient, if you really wanted to say the 10, suppose you could do that. Leading term, you only have one term, so that would just be the 10. And the degree refers to your exponents. And in our case here, you don't have an exponent, so zero. Your next polynomial function, the one you've worked with a lot, is something linear. Linear is like y equals mx plus b. They give you a little example. So linear would be like p of x equals, how about 2x plus 1? Make up a ton of these. So my leading coefficient is going to be, what do we think? Yeah, that's 2. Okay. The entire leading term would be the 2x, good. The degree? One, awesome, yep, because there's a one right here, we just don't write it. That's a linear function. I've been doing those forever. Um, number three, quadratic function. We just came off of a big chapter with you. Okay, so. So quadratic function looks like this. So we have y equals like ax squared plus bx plus c is how you typically see these written. 
I'm gonna make up an example. How about P of X equals, remember to not use, how about three X squared plus four X plus five? So in this case, what would be my leading coefficient? Three plus the leading term would be three X squared and the degree. Yeah. Again, easy. The different characteristics of your polynomial. Cubic. This one you probably don't have much exposure to. Other than when you did the factoring. So I'm going to make it one of those. This is when you like factored your cubes. How about that? Your leading coefficient in this case would just be a one. Your leading term is going to be the x cubed, and the degree of the polynomial would be three. And again, that means that that would have three solutions if we solved it. I don't know if you've ever heard of this last one, the quartet. Maybe, maybe not. In the word. Okay. So quartic is just degree four. So how about two x to the fourth? Let me just skip some terms just so they don't have space. Plus uh, six x plus twelve. How about that? So your leading coefficient is a two. Your leading term is two x to the fourth, and your degree is a four. Okay. So those are the main polynomials that we are going to work with. And what we do on this next page is we're going to draw some pictures. You are not graded on your responsibility, nor am I. Okay. So keep that in mind. What you're going to be trying to do right now is be able to tell me what these look like without using your vacuum calculator. They are all going to have the same shape and they're going to have the same what we call end behavior when you look at the leading term. So number one here it says n equals even. So that means this is an even degree polynomial. So for instance, even degree polynomials would be like x squared, uh, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, so on and so forth. This says a sub n is greater than zero. So what was a sub n, do you remember? What did this stand for? Leading coefficient, yep. So this means that your leading coefficient is positive. So by taking those two items, degree and sign of your leading coefficient, you'll be able to sketch this. So x squared as a shape, this is parabolic. Same thing with b. So as my degree increases, I just have more, um, for lack of better words, it kind of does one of these through the middle instead. So it's still gonna open up like your normal parabola would. It's just in the middle. You're going to have a little bit of fluctuation like that. So, what we do to summarize an even degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient, I'll show you, is you're going to draw a picture that looks similar to this. So, you draw your parabola, and then you're just going to put some little scribbles or whatnot into the middle of this. So, this is our case right here for an even degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient. We're going to sketch that. So it's kind of like this. So anytime you're working with even degree and it starts with a positive, it's going to have that same overall shape. Okay. So now say that your polynomial is still even, but this time we're changing. Leading coefficient is negative. So we're going to say leading coefficient is now negative. But you guys know this from the past. What does a parabola do if it has a negative in the front? It opens down, right? Remember learning that hopefully? So this would be like negative x to the second negative x to the fourth, negative x to the sixth. So how we're going to summarize that is essentially this, but we're going to just open downwards. So that's going to correspond. 
find those sets that look just like this. All right. So do the best you can with the picture. You're not graded on your artistic ability. Harder than it looks, right? Okay, so that is category number two. Now I get to my five degree polynomial. So my third case here, odd polynomial. So odd polynomials, positive leading coefficient. I'm going to say my leading coefficient is positive. So these are like x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh. And what this is going to look like are the other two pictures that were on the bottom of that page. So you're going to make it look just like that. So just like letter C on this page. So that's the picture that we're looking to kind of represent. And then obviously the next one's going to be like letter D. So it kind of goes one of these. So anytime you graph x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, or a positive leading coefficient, without even picking up your graphing calculator, you should know that it looks like that. And then last one here, I have n equals odd, so I have an odd degree. So again, it's still going to be x cubed, still going to be x to the fifth. But the difference on these is I need to put that negative in the front. So this one has a leading coefficient that is negative. So it's just going to open the opposite direction. This does the opposite. Leading coefficient negative. I'm going to go something like that, give or take. How do we do the pictures? Decent? I know, that's kind of tough, right? Here, that's really tough. Last one is difficult. That's okay. So those are your four choices. And that's how you pick. You say, okay, what's my degree? And am I positive or negative? And then that is what your graph is going to result in. Okay, so now. Classify your polynomial as constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, or quartic. Determine the leading term. I always use LT if I have to abbreviate that. Leading coefficient, LC. And degree is always the letter N of the polynomial. Now, in order to do this, you must be in standard form. So that's the first thing I'm going to ask you on these. And then that's it. Just three little examples. So if you're not in standard form, you got to rearrange it. Okay. So number one, is it in standard form? Yes. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to say standard form. Standard form means highest exponent down the smallest. Standard form check. Classify the polynomial. What's this thing called? Quartic. Very good. It's a weird sounding one. So this is what we call a quartic polynomial. What is the degree of a quartic polynomial? Four. What is the leading term? Yep, one fourth x to the fourth. Take the whole thing. Leading coefficient is one fourth. Okay, now over here on the side. What you're able to do is call the leading term test. And that means look at the leading term, find the degree, positive or negative. So degree of my leading term was even or odd? Even. And is my leading coefficient positive or negative? Positive. So even and then leading coefficient is positive. So now what you can do is flip backwards in your notes and you want to find what picture shows me an even polynomial with a positive leading coefficient and you stack it. So that one looks like, yeah. 
And as you do more of these, you'll just kind of remember the overall shape. And again, you'll notice we didn't use the graphing calculator to get it. It's going to follow that same pattern. Um, so number two. Um, is number two in standard form? Yes. So standard form, I'm going to put a check just because when you go to over to homework, some of them are not in standard form. So you need to make sure you check for that and rearrange the same thing. Classify the polynomial. This one you guys just did a ton of work with. This one is called quadratic. That's when you factor a t-chart, you got those two solutions. Degrees two, leading term is seven x squared, leading coefficient is seven. So now I'm going to take my leading term and test it. So first of all, I have an even degree. And my leading coefficient is positive. So isn't it the same thing for from above? Yeah. But as I'm sure you maybe remember, the x squared, it's not going to have anything um, that looks like a w through the middle. But if you want to still draw the same sketch, you can. Because again, it has what we call the same end behavior. So it's the same thing on the x. All right, number two, that one arranged in standard form. It is. Yep. So this one's also good to go. The standard form check. Classify this polynomial. This is what we call a cubic polynomial of degree three, where my leading term is x cubed and my coefficient is one. I just pull them apart. So my leading term test. So I have odd degree and leading coefficient is positive. So I'm going to sketch one of those. Okay. Again, you're getting all these pictures based on those two characteristics as opposed to pictures in the calculator. Okay. Questions so far? Perfect. Here's your last one. So you just have to read. Because which of the following functions models the following relationship? Alpha is equal to the difference between the sum of the cube of the input and four times the square of the input. I'm going to stop right there for a second. I see that we're doing a cube and a square. I see no mention of a cube root. That's out. And the product of five and the input decreased by seven. So that phrase right there is going to indicate my need for parentheses around that. Okay. So just switch one. Flip over to homework. So these are your homework problems. They will not take you long. Yes, please avoid the shape. Where you see leading coefficient, you can write LC. Where you see the leading term, you can write LT. And degree is just N equals and then the power. Um, which of these are going to have to get rearranged in the standard form? Yep, letter B, make sure you do standard form for. Same thing with letter E. Oh, and the bottom ones, yep, he's right. And then you're just matching these. And the bottom ones that are rearranged. Um, which one were oh, letter F? Make sure you rearrange letter J. I'm sorry, H, G, E. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. So you've got just those two work problems to complete. Those of you here right now, you've got 15 minutes. You should have no problem completing them. But with these problems at the bottom, just pull the leading term and figure out which picture it matches up with. There should be no need to use your calculator whatsoever. You are only to figure out your which of the four you're only making up the leading term. Yep, good question. All right, so just problem set number one for the weekend. Again, there is only that front side. And those will be checked on Monday.